Okay. So the last piece of information, the last stellar property I want to highlight is the diameter. And again, we're using a binary star system to extract this information, but this time it has nothing to do with Doppler shift. So this time we're just looking at the uh, light curve of what we call an eclipsing binary system. And eclipsing binary means that one of the stars eclipses the other one in its orbit. And uh, the light curve is the brightness over time of that binary system. So different pieces of the light curve give us different diameters. So if you got to this piece of the activity, um, which one of these like timing pairs gives us the diameter of this small star? Okay, I figured it out. So let me graphically describe, let me draw my one and two and my one and three. And when I look at one and two, then the, um, I guess, relevant distance between those two objects is here. And the distance between one and three is here. So if I use the timing from one and two, then I can notice that if I, if I take that time difference, then that can give me the diameter of the second star. Whereas the time difference between one and three would give me the diameter of the large star. So I don't know the, you know, a good verbal description. So whatever you chose in the activity will probably be better than however I'm expressing it. Um, but the point is that if, as, star, as the small star starts to go in front of the large star, then at time one, it's just, you know, barely kissing the edge. At time two, it's moved one full diameter over into the star. And so then as it goes from um, time one to time three, it's moving the entire diameter of the large star to get there. All right, so that's our eclipsing binary. Um, I'm not sure that your book makes a huge distinction between eclipsing binary uh, and other binaries. I don't know if they use that word eclipsing binary, maybe, maybe not. But the other type of binary, the binary that gives us the mass of stars, that's called a spectroscopic binary because it doesn't need to be in you know, this particular geometry. The eclipsing binary is kind of special because it means that one of the stars has to be able to get between the larger star and our line of sight. Um, but in general, that's not true. Stars can be you know, oriented in any given direction um, relative to our perspective. So eclipsing binaries are more rare than spectroscopic binaries. All right. Oh yeah, so this is the other way that you can measure exoplanets around stars too, because sometimes exoplanets are oriented so that they orbit in front of their star uh, from our perspective. So both spectroscopic uh, and eclipsing methods can be used to detect exoplanets. And I think the spectroscopic method won the Nobel Prize in 2018 or 2019. All right. So we've already um, talked about one other way to measure the diameter of a star. So I just wanna pull this up again as a, a review question. So if you have a red star that you measure to have, this says higher, but let's say it has the same luminosity as a blue star, then what can you stay, say about the red star? That's not the button I wanted to click, this is the one. All right, this is looking good. So we know that the uh, red star must be larger than the blue star because it's cooler. If it has a lower temperature, yet it has the same luminosity, then it must have a larger radius. So excellent. So now we have two measures of uh, two ways to measure diameter, one by noticing temperature and luminosity, and the other one is the eclipsing binary.